Well, happy Tuesday. My name is Sierra Ladroma. I have recently joined the team as a project manager for the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. It's incredible to be able to bring inspiring entrepreneurs, workshops, and events to the community. Now, many of you would have received a form to complete. Please do so after this event. This information allows us to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. I'll also put that form in the chat option for you to easily get to. Now, throughout this, feel free to use the chat option to add questions or comments. Today's presenter is Lori Hackney. She is the Economic Development Specialist from the U.S. Small Business Administration. She will provide a quick chat of what, why, and how of the Payment Protection Program, also known as PPP. We are also joined by Dave Lentil, the Lead Lender Relations Specialist. Thanks, Sierra. Thanks to Sierra and to Megan for allowing SBA this opportunity to kind of come to you and give you an update on the payroll protection loan. Um, I'm going to start out by mentioning a little bit about our economic injury disaster loan. The economic injury disaster loan is for financial and operating expenses. It is three and three quarters interest and it can be up to 30 years and the first payment is deferred for 12 months. Right now, due to the limited funding on the yeah, EIDL loan, it is just limited to ag loans and that is basically food, ranching, livestock, and things of farming. So that is closed to nothing but ag. It does have an advanced portion on there for up to $10,000. So some people may have applied prior to it being shut down. If you have applied and you have a loan application number that starts with the three, we're just asking you to be patient because they are going to get to us. Um, to put it in perspective, the state of Iowa was the 49th state added as a disaster. So we are very low on the totem pole. Um, but they are getting around to it. So if you have a number three in your loan application, just be patient, keep checking your email for updates and check your bank account because the advance may be put into your account without you knowing. Now, the way the advance is determined is it's $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. So that is the amount that you can get. If you apply for the payroll protection loan, that advance on the idle side will be subtracted from your total on your payroll protection side. Um, also, if your loan application starts with the two, they're asking that you would please go back in and reapply. I know that I said it was closed only to ag, but they're asking if you do have a number two to go back in and apply, and they will attach that application to your previous application and you won't lose your place in line. But that's what they're asking to do. So that's what I'll speak about on the IDO. Now on the payroll protection side, payroll protection is designed to assist um, employees to keep their staff on during this COVID-19 um, disaster. It's basically for payroll and certain operating expenses like utilities and rent. It can be up to $10 million. It is for two years and it's at 1% interest. The first payment is also deferred on this one and it is deferred for six months. Right now, there is about $100 billion left in payroll protection. So if you know people that haven't applied or are still thinking about applying, go ahead and encourage them to apply. They can apply up until June 30th of this year. So far to date, Iowa has had about 53,000 loans for about $5 billion approved through the payroll protection program. I do believe Jenica has joined us. Jenica is with the SBDC and so we're gonna have her speak in a little bit later. Um, how do you go about applying for the, S the payroll protection loan? The payroll protection loan is a loan that you get through your bank, so you need to have a banking relationship it is for any small business that meets the small business standard of 500 employees or less. It can also be for a sole proprietor or an independent contractor. So if you are interested in applying, just reach out to your bank. We have over 400 lenders doing payroll protection loans. Now, if you can't find a lender, you can go out to our website, which is www.sba.gov disaster. And the lenders are listed out there by state. So you can just click on the state of Iowa and find a lender that way. 
or you can also do a non-lender. We have some non-lenders that are participating in the program and the non-lenders are PayPal, Intuit, and Square. So you can also apply for the loan through them. How do you calculate the loan amount for the payroll protection? Um, basically, you take your average monthly net profit and you multiply it times 2.5 and that will give you the eligible loan amount. You can include in there also retirement contributions, health insurance contributions, and state taxes um, assessed to the employer's compensation. All of that can be compounded into your calculation for the payroll loan. If you still haven't filed your 2019 taxes, that's okay, you can still go ahead and apply. However, you must include the Form 1040 Schedule C with your application to the bank. What type of other documentation will you need for the payroll protection? The lender will determine any additional documentation needs that they have, but the most common forms of documentation are gonna be your W-2s, your W-3s, your payroll processing reports, and quarterly and annual tax reports. All of that will be needed and they will request that from you. The uses for the payroll protection, um, like I said before, it's basically for payroll expenses. So you must use at least up to 75% of the funds for um, employee compensation. You can also use it for mortgage interest. You can use it for rent and you can use it for utilities as um, needed. However, once you get the money, you have eight weeks within time frame to use it. So when should you start using your payroll funds? The answer to that is immediately. Because again, like I said, you have eight weeks beginning the day that your funds are received. So from the time you receive your funds from the bank, you have eight weeks to use the funds. The eight weeks cannot be delayed if your business still isn't open due to um, state orders. You still have to get your employees back on and pay them. If the lender makes, um, once the lender makes your deposit, and it's going to be in one full disbursement. You have um, 20 days to get the documentation back to the lender and 20 days. Um, I'm sorry, let me back up. Once the lender gets you your funds, you have 20 days to prove the documentation, get it back to the lender. Otherwise, the loan will be canceled. So the lender's going to approve the loan. He's going to let you know that the loan is approved. He has 10 days to get the funding to you and then. He also has to get you the documentation. Once you receive the documentation, you complete it, you get it back to him. You have 20 days to do that. Then once you receive the funds, your eight weeks start. Um, the PP loan is designed to be forgivable. However, there are certain qualifications for that. And like I said, it must use 75% of that loan for payroll in order for it to be considered forgivable. There are other guidance on that coming. However, we have not received that guidance yet at SBA, so there's not much I can tell you about the forgiveness portion. Uh, once we get more documentation and clearer explanation of the rules, we will be forwarding it out. So you must maintain your employees during the time frame. You cannot reduce your staff by more than 25%. If there are level changes made between February 15th and April 26th, you must rehire to keep your levels, staff levels that there were at the time of the application of the loan. If you cannot maintain the full-time employees or the wages, then that's gonna reduce your forgiveness amount. However, like I said before, there's gonna be more guidance on the forgiveness and the different areas of forgiveness. And once we receive that, then we will be forwarding it on. Um, there's a great fact sheet out on the Treasury's website, and I would encourage anyone that's really interested to go out there and check it because it is updated daily with the most current information, and you can find that at home.treasury.gov slash policy hyphen issues slash cares. And like I said, it's updated daily. It's got a lot of great information. You can also find the list of lenders out there as well if you're looking for a lender. And that pretty much, even though I know it's short, I think covers everything that we have about that. 
Jane, do you have anything that you want to add or that I missed or? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> um, just from the standpoint that um, um, on the PPP, that there is a hundred million left. Um, we wanna make sure that um, all the underserved markets have access to this and that um, we can help you connect um, to a banking relationship. We, can, we won't showcase one bank over another, but we will help you to identify some potential lenders. And um, so we're really trying to work through that right now too and answering a lot of questions. Um, the, you mentioned if I could just say one thing sure. on the, if, sure. if um, an applicant applies for both EIDL and PPP and they get the EIDL advance, it's not reduced from the loan, it's reduced from the forgiveness amount. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Thank you. you know, I just wanted to make that no, little clarification. No, I appreciate that. Thank so, you. Okay. That's all I had. Thanks. Thanks. There is quite a few information in the chat. Um, okay. So if attendees want to go there and just do a copy and paste into their um, browsers, that would be great. Okay. And like we said, there's still like $100 billion left and you have until June 30th to apply. So by all means, Dave, do you have anything you want to add? Oh, I think you covered it all, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also, Jane. <laughs> Jenica oh, Johnson. Um, Lori, one other thing too on Idle, we're getting a lot of questions because of, uh, as Lori mentioned, um, we're kind of at the back of the pack and we're starting to see a lot of idle loans be approved though. Um, and we just got more updated numbers today. So we are um, seeing more activity there. However, a lot of people are inquiring of our district office. At our district office, we don't have access to the loan portal. So we right. cannot give you updates on idle loans, but um, we wanna direct everybody to um, disaster customer service at sba.gov or the um, the phone number is 1-800-659-2955 and that is your um, that is your contact information I'll type it in here too Lori thanks okay thank you um, Jenica Johnson is the regional director of our Small Business Development Center, which is one of our resource partners. And they've been great, just like the Women's Business Center has been great in assisting customers. So Jenica, if you wanna give a brief highlight on what you've been seeing and some of the activity you've been having, greatly appreciate it. Sure, hi. Thanks hi. for having me. Um, sure. As Lori said, I'm the regional director for the Mid-Iowa Small Business Development Center. I know the Women's Business Center is an awesome resource that spans statewide. So the first thing I want to note is that if anyone is listening from outside of the metro area and across the state, you're more than welcome to look for a local uh, SBDC. We cover all 99 counties and we have 15 different regional centers that are happy to take any questions that you have. Uh, we offer free business counseling services across the board. So if you have questions about PPP or EIDL, or a lot of the questions that we're dealing with now is how do I get opened up again? Because as we're having some of these, uh, as, as each county and the state has been opening slowly, that's a lot of the questions that we're getting. And we wanna make sure that we encourage our businesses to really be fully prepared for everything that they need to have ready to be open again and to get our economy back on track. Um, so we have a lot of information that's available at our SBDC website. Uh, our website is iowasbdc.org. And as I mentioned, you can request a counseling session directly from our website. Uh, when it, everything that Lori said about PPP, I'm so glad that she said we still have money left. That's a big question that we get. Uh, talk to your banker, go to the bank. That is who that PPP has to go through. It, they're, the big distinction between IDLE loans and the PPP loans are who administers the, the program. And IDLE goes through SBA. It is not open right now. There's no way to apply for it. Again, if you have previously applied, they are still processing those loans. But for the PPP, it has to go through a bank. So you can start that relationship, even if you don't have one, or talk to your current banker that you have and ask them about the things that you need or contact your women's business center 
or an SBDC and they can tell you what to start putting together to contact your bank. And those Thank are you. my big highlights. <laughs> Thank you. For more information, you're free to contact the district office. We are there and we are willing to help as much as we possibly can. And I think that's it, unless you have some more questions for us. This is perfect. Uh, does anyone have any questions for this team? Sounds like we have everyone here that you could possibly <laughs> want to talk to. Sierra, <laughs> could you ask? Yeah. Could you ask everybody if they've gotten funding and if anybody's still looking for funding? Yes, we'd like to know. If you've received funding, we'd like to know that. And if you're still looking, we'd like to know that as well. Because there was a lot of misinformation, a lot of people that were self-employed, not realizing that the, they were eligible under PPP as well. Mm -hmm. So the question that we have it? is, um, what kind of documents is needed after you receive the loan that you'll need to submit to bank and when is that time frame? Um, once the once the lender reaches out and tells them that it's approved, they'll send the documentation that they need to sign and send back to them. They have 20 days to get that document, those documents back to the lender. Otherwise, the loan will be canceled. If you're asking regarding forgiveness, um, we're going to have more guidance here within um, the next day or two from the SBA that their um, Treasury has been finalizing all of the um, the final guidance on on the forgiveness process and what's involved. One piece of it came out Friday night and that's on the treasury.gov backslash cares website. And TJ has added that um, she does know that a few Iowa Center clients have received their PPP approval or funds in the past couple of weeks. TJ, so, will you reach out, will you send me an email? Will you reach out to me and let me know? Oh, good. There are some people that are saying they've received funding, Jay. That's awesome. Uh, Sammy Joe said that they have received funding, and Michelle said she is in the process of closing her loan. So that's good. awesome. Reach out to us. As you know, SBA is on front and center with all this um, kind of leading the PPP effort. But if you need anything or have it, um, need anything um, any questions just reach out to us we have russ also from the iowa center sharing that the biggest issue that he's seen for sole proprietors is that if they declared a loss or very little net income on their schedule um, that the bank wouldn't fund them even if they have more mortgage interest or rent or util utilities and interest on pre-existing loans for their business yeah, for, for Schedule C and for Schedule F, uh, which is for the farmers, um, you have to have reported a positive net income to the federal government in order to qualify. Um, a lot of uh, sole proprietors, a lot of farmers uh, choose to use standard accounting practices, which are allowable uh, to report for tax purposes that they didn't have a net income. But if you've reported to the federal government that you didn't have a net income, then you're not eligible for PPP. Uh, I can't comment on it being a very small amount. I mean, if there, if there is uh, any uh, net income, uh, you do qualify, but that net income is the starting point for your loan amount. And obviously the smaller the, the net income amount is, uh, the smaller the PPP loan is going to be. Again, I can't speak to why a bank may uh, choose not to move forward with a loan, but you know, if you're looking at uh, a loan of maybe $1,200, they, you know, some banks may not want to take a look at at a loan that small. But uh, uh, certainly, if you have a bank uh, that doesn't want to look at at that small of amount, uh, as Lori said, there are other options that are out there. But you do have to have a positive net income on your Schedule C or Schedule F to qualify. Oh, and one other thing too, if you're already an SBA borrower and you have a loan on the books, you can get your payments um, deferred for six months. All you have to do is go back to your lender, let them know that um, you wanna defer your payments. You can get those payments deferred and SBA will make those payments for you for up to six months. 
and anybody with any existing disaster loans, they're being deferred through the end of the calendar year. Sierra, welcome on board. Yes, thank you Looking so much. Forward to working with you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Great. Thank Thanks, you, Sierra. Appreciate it. Yes. Bye bye. You. Thank bye. you. Bye.